live from parts unknown. You're listening to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Podcast, the only wrestling podcast on the planet. We think. Sit back, relax, prepare for positivity to run through your veins as Simon Miller gives you your weekly dose of powerful pro wrestling audio. It is Miller Time. Hello and welcome to Simon Miller's Pro Wrestling Show. Thank you very much for joining me. And for all the tweets and messages I've got over the last week, I know more episodes are going up, but WrestleMania is but a week away, so we may as well, you know, get the hype train going. But also, I'm very lucky to be going to WrestleMania this year with my good pals at What Culture, and I'm going to try and smash... Uh, a podcast out over there, but you just never know what it's going to be. It may have to be kind of more random vlogs over over on the YouTube channel. So on that note, you're going to get a few more as well. And if you've never listened to the podcast before, we try and do a couple of episodes a week. The main one goes down on Wednesday, 1 p.m. GNT on my YouTube channel. Also goes up on audio, but we do a second episode where we get a Patreon on. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316 is how I'm able to do all of these podcasts. And today, uh, I've got someone that we've, we've chatted to a, a lot in the side. Simon Miller's Facebook group, Simon Miller's Pro Podcast, you can also join. And that is my friend Chaney. Chaney, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. I've been looking forward to talking to you, and I'm glad I'm glad that you're on. Uh, now, we had a, a brief chat before we started, and I'm very happy to say again that you want to focus your attentions on the women's division, because as you rightly said, it's rare to have the attention on the women's division. And, you know, right now is probably, within the WWE at least, in better shape than it, it ever has been. I mean, it, it's, quite, it's quite amazing. But before we do get there, tell me how you got into this crazy thing called wrestling. Tell me what you love about it. Tell me what you hate about it. Let's get some background into, into your passion. Well, I actually grew up watching wrestling in the 80s. So I always gravitated towards the valets, which was Miss Elizabeth. And then, of course, Sherry, you know, um, the fabulous Sherry, you know, I really went into it, you know, and I, I used to be a big macho Randy Savage fan, um, because of, because he could cut great promo, Yeah, you know? And so it kind of grew with me. And then, you know, after a while, when I got a little bit older, I didn't watch it as much, but I started getting back into it again during the attitude era and that was around my teenage years and women like china who were absolutely killing it you know was something i was like wow i i've never seen any female wrestlers because most of them were valets at the time hmm. you know you got you know you got like a laundry blaze and all of those um female wrestlers that kind of came up into the world of wrestling um, to show off. I actually also loved, I used to watch glow when it used to be on the weekends. Um, it's, it's silly, but it's something that I kind of gravitated towards when I was a lot younger. So, you know, I got into it. I stopped watching again for a while and I got right back into it a couple of years ago, looking at how the, the women's evolution completely started and how it was changing the up current, you know, with Paige and with, you know, Charlotte Flair, all of those, um, AJ Lee, um, basically I started getting into it a little bit more and getting more invested into the storylines. Um, I'm a big Becky Lynch fan, so I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that this is going to happen for her, but you know, I, I don't know, but I've always gravitated <laughs> towards <laughs> I've always gravitated towards the female wrestlers and seeing this uptick is just so phenomenal. You know, how they've really hit it home with the female division. You know, the female division struggled for a really long time and for them to have as much talent on the roster that they have now is just it's phenomenal. You know, you're getting high quality matches out of these women. These women are outperforming everybody. You know, they're they're giving the men the run run for their money, pretty much. Because yeah, absolutely. I think I think the male wrestlers absolutely love this change. And I think it makes a, a better cohesive workplace instead of just treating them like back in the attitude era, you know, it was nothing but brawn penny matches and <laughs> evening gown dress matches and 
you know, silly stuff like that to get your attention. But now it's, it's more like empowerment and more, it's very special. You know, this is a very special time, I think, in WWE. You know, not just because they're getting great men's talent, but they're getting phenomenal women's talent. Mm. And especially with NXT and all the girls that are in NXT right now, like Casey Catanzaro and uh, Candice LeRae and Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane, you know, Shayna Baszler, like all of those women have such great power and they know how to work a crowd. You know, and just even looking by the independent scene, like Ring of Honor with like uh, Britt Baker and uh, Madison Rain, um, to Neil Dashwood, of course, she used to be Emma. You know, they're absolutely smashing it, you know, and everybody's competition's getting higher and higher, especially now with AEW in the mix. Brandy Rhodes is really building up their women's program there, and yeah. she's really, really showing okay, this is how we, we've got to get a women's program. You know, they're, they're absolutely smashing it with the talent that they're getting. So, you know, I just, yeah, I'm a big, I'm a huge women's wrestler fan. Not that I don't like the men's wrestling, but they don't get, they get more matches than the women do. Sometimes the women don't even get a match during <laughs> like yet. SmackDown or Raw, you know, mostly SmackDown. Um, well, sometimes like matches they're... just vanish altogether, Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> they're meant to happen yeah, and they I never know. do. I was like, I was like, wait, what, were we supposed to have a fatal four way? And then no, I was just like, no, you were wrong. What? <laughs> I was so wrong. I was like, okay, well, I'll just watch this. And then when they came back to commercial, it was, oh, it's a women, it's for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And I'm like, how is this possible? Are you serious? I know. I know. Honestly, like. I mean, for starters, I just want to say that is one of the best descriptions of the women's division I've ever heard. You're 100% correct. And you're allowed to enjoy the women more because you are a woman. Do you know what I mean? This, this seems to be this, this crazy thing in 2019 where, you know, people forget that there is always going to be that connection, be it race or gender or even nationality. Like we talked about this a thousand times on this podcast. I liked the British Bulldog when I was a kid because I could go, wow, a British dude made it to America. That was it. That's all it mm -hmm. was. You know, I, I, do I think he was the best wrestler ever? No, not particularly. But I was just amazed. It was good. Don't go. I don't want to appeal. Yeah, I do think he was good. But I was amazed that he was able to, to do all of that. I thought it was incredible. So, you know, as someone you know, of, that, of, that, of that gender, which it goes into a whole other conversation we'll have in a, a podcast in the future. This is why, you know, you mentioned AEW and, and Brandy Rose. Like they've mentioned about, uh, you know, sexuality and transgender wrestlers. And that's why that's really important as well, because you need to have these characters that speak to everybody because it means more people are going to watch wrestling and it just reaches out. And I think that's really important. Diversity and variety is everything. And you're right, right now, the women's wrestling is, and if anyone that wants to try and have an argument, there's a reason those three ladies are in the main event of WrestleMania 35. And it's not because it's a, don't get me wrong, I'm sure some people backstage in WWE do, I'm not naive, I'm sure some, at least one person said, ah, oh, but this will be a great marketing opportunity. But that's not enough. Do you know what I mean? They're there because they deserve to be there. And that's the that's the be all and end all. Oh, of course. No, I totally agree with you. I, you know, I was so happy that they got the main event of WrestleMania. That's huge. And that's just something that it's going to show to us, you know, and show all these little girls who are looking up to these wrestlers. You know, we've got a whole nother generation that's behind us that is going to be more supportive of the women's division. You know, some of these little girls look up to these female wrestlers like Bailey, you know, and Sasha Banks, um, you know, uh, Ronda Rousey, all of that. I mean, I think they absolutely did the best thing and the right thing um, for, uh, for WrestleMania. You know, I think, it was t time to change the old guard and put in someone new. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think that's the cool thing about WrestleMania 35 is that it does feel different, or at least I hope that's, you know, I hope that's what's going to happen. Uh, we should say as well, as we are talking about the, the, the main event, it's, it came out today. We're recording this on the Thursday. I think this will go up on the Friday, but it came out today. 
uh, via, I mean, this is just Dave Meltzer's comment, so, you know, take that for, for what you deem worthy. But apparently that triple threat match, again, you know, we, we talked about this. We know what's going to happen. Actually, let's do it step by step. Obviously, on SmackDown, we had the Charlotte versus versus Oscar match. Uh, Charlotte wins the wins the Women's Championship. Uh, let me know, before we get into the, the potential fallout, let me know your, your thoughts on that, because you just said yourself, you know, you tuned in for one match and you got something, you got something completely different. And it, it did send the internet into meltdown. They all went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the internet completely melted down. Um, I was surprised that they this far before WrestleMania, I was just like, okay, so it's going to be another classic. Which honestly, it was a, it was a really good match because both Oscar and Charlotte pull the best out of each other, and they pour it out in in that ring, and they and they're both fierce competitors. So. Seeing that was really great because I saw them at WrestleMania last year and it was such a great match. I was just like, why isn't this more near the main event? Because it felt like it should have been last year. But, you know, her undefeated, you know, her streak going away. I, you know, I don't like how they've handled Asuka, but... I think, like you said um, yesterday, they probably had too many matches on the card and they had to do something to improvise that. So I think this was a spur of the moment thing that just kind of happened. And then giving it to Charlotte, well, that was kind of going to be logical in, in the end. So I'm not really upset about, you know, Charlotte winning the title off of Asuka. I think a lot of people are mad because of the way Oscar's been treated in since she's come up from NXT because a lot of people followed her and they just feel like they're burying her. And I don't really think that's the case. I think that, you know, since you've got so much talent, you've got to kind of trim it down a little bit. You know, we've got so many women wrestlers on the roster it's, you know, it's it's saturated right now. You know, that's why they haven't brought up any female wrestlers from NXT when they brought up uh, Aleister Black and Ricochet and Johnny Gargano and Ciampa because of the fact that the women's division down there, they're still working on it. You know, and I think, you know, he wants, Triple H is not going to give us subpar, you know, female wrestlers. I think he wants to get the best out of them and have them grow organically down in NXT. And then when they're ready for the big time, then move them up there. I see what, you know, his point and what he's doing, but I don't, you know, it, it happened, you know, with the Charlotte match, everybody had a meltdown, but they're, they've got some storyline and whatever's going to play out on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown this week, that's going to show us what their plan really is for the triple threat. Well, it certainly is. And now I will use that perfectly to segue into the news that came out today. So apparently, and this is what I worried, but apparently what's go is going to be a, not a winner take all match, but all the titles on the line. And what that will entail is if Ronda Rousey beats Charlotte, Ronda Rousey would be the raw and SmackDown women's champion. But if Charlotte beats Becky, Charlotte, will just still be SmackDown Women's Champion, but she won't be Raw Women's Champion. And if Becky pins either of them, she will win their belt. Now, I was worried about this because that is way too complicated. That is just, that is such a complicated stipulation. Like, why would that be the case? Surely if all the belts are involved, all of them should be on the line. But obviously we can never do things, uh, we can never do things si simply. And if you are going, I don't understand that, you're not alone, don't worry. It takes a while for it to permeate your brain. But basically whoever loses loses that singular title, meaning within that match, only Charlotte or Ronda would be able to walk away with both. Because again, if Charlotte pins Ronda, Charlotte would have both. And if Ronda pins Charlotte, she would have both and, you know, all, all variations uh, thereof. What do you think about that? Because I, I, I you know, the, the feud has been a little bit overbooked. The story did go a little bit off the rails. Maybe it peaked too early and it is coming down. But again, as we've mentioned, it, there's still a lot of, of positives there. You know, to me, I, I think sometimes the simplest story is the best. And the story should just be women smashed it this year, women in the main event, who's the best out of these three? As opposed to 
you know, random wins on SmackDown, which I didn't, I didn't overly mind. Like, I understand the criticism, but I got over it quite quickly. I'm like, oh, well, you know, at least Oscar won the Royal Rumble. You know, let's take what we can get. <laughs> But what do you think about that? Is that too much? Is it too much? Is it crazy? If you're like a casual fan, you watch WrestleMania, are you going to be like, what the flip is this? I know. Casual fans are going to be like, what is going on? You know, I don't get this. I, oh my gosh. What is, oh my gosh. WWE, man. They, oh man. This is, this is a lot to pack in. <laughs> um, basically, I think Becky's still going to win. I don't know which title she's going to get, but I think she's still going to beat Ronda because that's her main goal. That's been her main goal since Survivor Series is to get at her. And so I think they're still going to play that storyline out to, you know, but I, you know, yeah, that's just way too complicated for a casual fan to be like what <laughs> i could I just see them just going what they'll they'll just be like sitting there like with their popcorn in hand just going i i don't know what to think of this you know no i think it's crazy i, I think sometimes it's best just to go here's a match the winner wins a bunch of belts that's it right you know, that 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 and i don't I, I think the problem with it is, I think Becky Lynch has to win that match, right? I really, really do. I, I think if they went the other way, it would be a travesty to everything that they've done. And I understand a swerve is cool sometimes, but, you know, the, the, the counterpoint to that is don't... There's only so much you can get away with when it comes to your fan base. And, you, you know, you, you need to balance that out. And I think even though it's expected and it's obvious, people want to see Becky Lynch win, so just have Becky Lynch wins. But now, obviously, you have the question, okay, well, who does she beat? You know, does she beat Charlotte to win the SmackDown title? Is that, is that enough now? Maybe that's not enough because then technically, she I mean, she did win the match, but she didn't win the match, right? Because her beating mm -hmm. Charlotte definitively underlines... I said this on a Y video that's going up today, you know. It definitively underlines that she didn't get the job done totally because she's only leaving there with one belt. Same thing if she beats Ronda Rousey. Now, if she does beat Ronda Rousey and she becomes the Raw Women's Champion, are you telling me that Becky Lynch goes to Raw and Charlotte goes to SmackDown, but they just ignore that feud because of this faux brand split that over the last few weeks has fought? I mean, all of a sudden, you're like, what is going on? How is... I can't even keep up with this. How is anybody else meant to keep up with this? It's all over the place. So... I'm surprised they've gone this way. I think it just be much. It makes much more sense to go. Whoever wins gets every single belt, and then you can still have Becky Lynch pin Charlotte if you want to protect Ronda, depending on if she's going away, she's staying, whatever. But you don't. You don't. I, I just think, you know, Charlotte coming out on SmackDown with that title after she's lost technically, but not technically, is just going to ruin Becky Lynch's moment. And I think at WrestleMania, it's all about making those moments and doubling down on those moments and ensuring that everybody is is, is happy. It's just be happy. And then we hit restart on Raw and SmackDown to, to kind of go into our new wrestling uh, wrestling season. Right. No, I agree. Casual thing. <laughs> yeah. I know. No, I totally agree with you. I think that the storyline has played out because first it was – Becky and Charlotte, and then Ronda Rousey got in the mix at Survivor Series. Then they took Becky because she, you know, Nia Jax broke her face and and everything, which I'm not even going to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> and looking like a total badass on top of that. Then, you know, she gives it to Charlotte. It looked like they were going to cool down their feud, but then it rained right back up after Survivor Series. I was just like, what are you doing? Like, what? You're okay with this, but now you're not? Yeah, that was that what? was great, wasn't it? It's been all over the place, which is accurate. It was just, I was just like, what in the world is going on? So, you know, I, you know, for a casual fan, just watching an episode, like if they watch after Survivor Series and be like, um, okay, so they're not friends anymore? I thought they were be, you know, <laughs> I, I thought that, I thought the same thing. And then when they did that, I was just like, Okay, well, I guess they're going that in a different direction than I expected to. But, you know, so I don't really know how those feuds are going to play out after Mania. Because if Becky, like you said, if Becky wins Ronda's belt, <laughs> that will show her as being a badass. But she'll still be taunting Charlotte Flair 
who's on SmackDown, you know, and <laughs> it's just going to be, it's still going to be, I think the storyline is they're going to have her not pin Charlotte and then they're still going to have their feud, but they're going to be bickering over two brands. So I'm so prepared for that. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> Because this is WWE. <laughs> what would you like to see happen at WrestleMania? Let's say, mm-hmm. let's say that they are the rules. They are the stipulations. Do you, I mean? Do you want to see Becky beat Ronda? Do you want to see Becky beat Charlotte? Like, what, what, what's your, what's your take? I think Becky should beat Ronda because of the fact that they've built up this hype with Ronda calling them out, telling them that you know they're they're not good wrestlers and all this stuff, and I'm a better wrestler than anybody on the roster. You know, type of thing, you know, and that wrestling's a sham and da, 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 da. I mean, she's gone into it so deep. Both of these women have an intense hatred for Rhonda. So they're going to go after her because they can. They'll team up to help each other. It's going to be interesting with Raw because, you know, this week they're going to have that that, uh, six-way tag match with Riot Squad And all three of them being on the same team. And the stipulation is that if you don't get along with your team, you can't be in the main event. So they may still try and pull another swerve on us. (laughs) Yes. Come Monday. (laughs) Do you think that's too much? Like, because my worry is, without wanting to deviate from the script too much, my worry is that the whole, and I think I'm reading into it, but, you know, Kofi Kingston, Vince McMahon, said, you know, let's see if a B-plus player can, you know, beat Day whatever he said. I was like, man, that's convoluted language. And see, I'm looking out for swerves now, and I think that's when <laughs> problems arrive. When you start looking at swerves, because the swerve is no longer the swerve, and you expect the swerve, you're like, okay, I don't understand where we've got to now. This is just crazy. So they could do something on Raw. They could absolutely do that. And don't forget, this is the week, right? If, if, if the people that are saying that WrestleMania 35 doesn't have enough buzz, this is the week. This is the week where we've mm-hmm. got to make sure the buzz is there. And if you don't get it, you, you well, that's it. Tough. It's done. You're over. You haven't got any more time to build it up. There's no more promotion. I hope they don't. I, I, I think we've... we've, we've we, I, I always like it, but I, I think we've done enough. Do you, I, I do want to talk to you about the other SmackDown women as well. But, you know, we mentioned the whole Ronda Rousey kayfabe stuff. Uh, what did you think about all that? You know, breaking the fourth wall, going on these promos, winding up the fans. Now, I've, I've made no bones about it. I get a small kick out of wrestlers winding up fans now because it feels like some hobby that they do and it just makes me laugh. But, you know, from a fan's point of view, what did you think? I mean, what do you think of Ronda Rousey in general? Because I'm really high on her. I think she's great. And I do understand that maybe we, we wouldn't have been in this position without Ronda Rousey because she is a bona fide celebrity. But, you know, and I get it, you know, even though that all the women deserve it, you do need a catalyst. That's just the way it works. So, you know, to change people's minds, there has to be a figure that, that comes in and smashes it. But, yeah, you know, what, what's your take? What's your opinion? I've been very high on Ronda Rousey. I mean, she came out there last year at Royal Rumble, and it was, it was just the whole internet blew up that day. And, you know, everybody couldn't believe it. Everyone was just like, I told you so. Ha, ha, ha. You know. Knew they were going to do this. You know, a lot of people were anticipating it. So there wasn't really a whole lot of, you know, everybody was already built up when she came out. Everybody was just like, you know, woohoo, you know, you know, the rumors are true, you know. And I think that she has performed very well within a year of the company, you know, and having a great trainer, training partner like Natalia, who is a very good wrestler, you know, she's got a huge legacy and um, she can pull matches out of anybody too. Um, I think that Rhonda has done a whole lot to shape the women's evolution. We, we went really to the top of the mountain with her. And I think that them pushing her more and letting her kind of, you know, Batten down the hatches I know she's kind of flubbed up on promo And stuff like that before But you know she is really still New to all of this So speaking is probably not her strongest suit But I think The promos that she has cut Have been absolutely phenomenal And it's just giving more build To the match You know they've been building it up For three to four months now That this is what's going to happen I go through a whole lot for that to happen. But when we did, 
it's paid off in the end because everybody's getting the match that they really wanted at WrestleMania and it being main invented. Mm. You know, I, I don't think if Rhonda wasn't in the position that she's in now, I think they wouldn't have put them as a main event match. I think they did it because of Rhonda, because she can, she can grab people like that because she is a celebrity and she has a legacy of her own. And I think that's, you know, you know, I think eventually if they hadn't gone this route um, and if Ronda Rousey wasn't even in the WWE, I think it would be a little bit more, you know, everyone would be sick of probably the Charlotte and Becky Lynch feud because it's been going on for 18 million years. So <laughs> I think it's a good thing that we've gotten, you know, We've gotten we've got three talented wrestlers going on the biggest stage of them all, and not one of them is nervous. I know they're probably nervous, but I think the fans are more excited because they are hoping that Becky Becky is kind of like the people's person of the WWE. I mean, she pulls in the crowd, and Charlotte and Ronda can pull out matches really good. You know, not as good as Charlotte, but Rhonda's been there for a year. You know, she's she's had to take some time to adjust. And I think she's adjusted very well within the WWE. Mm. You know, and if she is going to take some time off, I think her losing the belt will show that. And then, you know, her going away for a while, I think, will cement that, you know, to show that, you know, and then when she comes back, Becky can still say, hey, I beat you fair and square, you know? Mm. So, you know, I can totally see, you know, but I am for Rhonda. I liked, you know, all of her build up, all of her matches so far have been really good. I even watched Evolution because of the Brie Bella Rhonda match because I knew Brie Bella would pull more talent out of her, you know? So, you know, I just think that she's been doing really great. And I think that she is going to be a really good face for WWE. You know, she, she, she's got, she's kind of like the John Cena of the, uh, and as compared to female wrestlers, I think it's a tie between her and Charlotte, you know, Charlotte's kind of the Roman Reigns because everybody, you know, either love or hates Roman Reigns, you know, but it's the same thing with John Cena. Everybody loves and hates him. It's the same with Rhonda. Everybody's going to love her. Or they're going to hate her. You know, that's just the bottom line of it. Whether you like her or not, she's here to stay. Mm, I do think it's, it, it, we live in a, it's a fascinating world. We do live in a crazy world where you, like you say, Rhonda hasn't even been doing this a year in terms of on TV. And yet we, we've judged her viciously already like we're mad at Ronda Rousey I mean I'm personally not but as a collective we are and you know imagine doing that in any job imagine you'd been a PR for a year ah you're not good enough so all right we just started give me like I think I've done pretty well I had the best match of last year's Wrestlemania and now you know using my my talent and my you know my drawing power I put us in the main event I think I've done okay so I, I do think that's unfair I, I like her I, I think she's a she's a trailblazer that's what Ronda Rousey does she's a you know that, that she just is she, she just is I mean you mentioned all the plaudits of the other women there as well what do you think is the future especially on Smackdown for the likes of Oscar Mandy Rose Sonya Deville Naomi Carmella because I, I think the one the one criticism that I will certainly feel like is more valid than the us the others there are others that are valid but I think they're more debatable is you know the, the the switch on SmackDown and where that leaves all those women has buried them a little bit because it was never explained you know nobody came out to interrupt the match they weren't bothered by it. So what do we do with that coming out of WrestleMania? Because I think the thing we've forgotten is we are going to need feuds. If we are going to try and keep Becky and Charlotte separate, which will be very difficult to justify, but hey-ho, it's not like WWE has done that before. You know, what, how, how do, who do we build up? Like, who does Charlotte... I mean, I, I guess the argument could be there's a ready-made feud there with, Char, with Charlotte and Oscar, right? Charlotte walked in, stole her title, ruined her WrestleMania match. They'll have good matches. We can eat that out. Yeah, sure, I get it. There's something there. But... You know, what, is, what happens to Naomi? What happens to Carmella? I mean, Carmella at this stage seems to have just, just, just vanished. So, I mean, do, do you think it's kind of... 
Has it hurt them or are we being a bit, you know, reactive to, to something that's actually that big of a deal? I think that the women's division in SmackDown is very weak and, you know, not saying that, you know, they don't have enough female talent as they do compared to Raw and what Raw's doing with their talent, especially, you know, with Sasha and Bailey and the tag team champs, you know, they're, they're doing a whole lot for the tag team championship, but they haven't really built it that much over in SmackDown with the exception of the Iconics. Other than them, yeah, you hardly see Naomi or Carmella. Heck, you, the only time you see Lana is if she's valeting for uh, Rusev, you know. So, you know, there's another wrestler that, you know, could have a feud. I don't know, you know, they kind of put a halt on the Mandy Rose Sonya Deville feud, you know, because you know, that last match with Asuka, you know, she you know, accidentally tripped on the apron and <laughs> I everything. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. So, Ridiculous. So, you know, I don't know if they're still going to build up that feud after WrestleMania or if they're going to put them in a new feud, like have Mandy. And, you know, Mandy's a really good performer. She cuts great promo. You know, she she is very good at what she does. And um, I love her finisher. Her finisher is just it's good, phenomenal. isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really yeah. good. Apparently, she was told to stop doing that at one point. But thankfully, everyone realized it's okay for ladies to have a good finishing move. Who knew? Who knew that was okay, right? I'm shocked to my core. I know. I know. I. It's just, I think they're going to have to build up the women's division. The same way they're having to build up the men's tag team division, yeah. which... Is still, you know, non-existent, you know, with, <laughs> especially in SmackDown. It's like, you got all of these great people. Heck, I just saw Sanity yesterday, on um, Tuesday about, night. Right? What was that? And I was just, I was just like, oh, hey, there they are. Honestly, it, when the, I said this on ups and downs, when the Miz dived into um, uh, uh, Alex, uh, Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane, you would be well within your rights to have no idea who that was. Because right. they, don't, they don't tell you. I don't think WWE knows, which sucks. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely sucks. But, you know, that's that's the truth of it. That's what happens. I know. I just think, yeah, I just think that they're, you know, going to have to build it up a little bit, start all over. I think that's the best thing. They just need to start over, reset a lot of feuds, and just kind of go at it a little bit differently, you know, especially in SmackDown versus Raw. Raw, they don't, you know, they've got a lot of talent that doesn't need to be said, you know, but SmackDown, you know, you don't hardly see any of the females unlike you see at Raw. You know, you see Nia and Tamina, you see N Natalia and Beth, Beth Phoenix now, and, you know, Sasha and Bailey, and then, you know, we haven't seen Mickey James in a while or Alicia Fox, so I don't know what they're doing with them two, you know. Uh, Lacey Evans, I was surprised that she didn't catwalk this week. Yeah, so, yeah it's true. You know, I, you know, I don't know what's in store. You know, it, if they did a total reset and did the superstar shakeup, I think it's going to play out a little bit better after the superstar shakeup. I think they've got a plan, but they, they're, they may hold back a little bit and not put them in feuds immediately until after that. I don't think, you know, if they build it up and they get some more talent in there, I think, you know, it either becomes oversaturated or not saturated enough. You know, there's just no two ways of looking at it, you know. But, yeah, it's just, you know, and, of course, you know, I've also forgot to mention Nikki Cross. I haven't seen her in ages. What's she doing? You know, I saw a little thing that she might be going after Alexa, you know, um, on WWE.com, she cut a promo about Alexa being the host. And so I don't know what they're going to do with that. You know, Alexa needs to be in a good feud with somebody, even if she's not wrestling. I think she needs to be in a good feud because she can, she cuts promos like nobody's business, you know, and that for the longest time, like her and Carmella were only valets in NXT. They didn't think they would amount to anything. And look how well they've done. You know, Carmella's a SmackDown Women's Champion. You know? So, I mean, yeah, I think they really need to hit the reset on the female talent 
And I think they'll only hit that after Superstar Shakeup because they don't want to be put in feuds and then they get traded. You know, I think they're going to keep play it safe after WrestleMania, but they could, you know, but they could start us in feuds and, you know, that might, that might work out too. But, you know, I, I'm not a mind reader, so <laughs> I, well, it, I it, wouldn't know. Even if you were Cheney, it would make no difference. You'd read Vince's mind and he'd change it the next day and you'd be like, oh, well, that was a waste of my mind reading powers. Uh, no, I, I think I think you're right, and I like your attitude towards it as well. Like, there, there, there's always a story to be told, and that you know, I remember. Oh, what were you moaning about? I mean, there would have been. Oh, we were moaning about Dean Ambrose, right? And his his character. Nobody talks about that now because it's a very reactive world we live in. We're always looking for the next issue to moan and complain about. A few days go by, and then there's something else, uh, you know, that, that that will take our attention away. And that's not the same for wrestling. That's the same for life. That's just what you know. That's just what happens. It's why news that you know the constant news headline cycles will focus on on one thing and then shift across to something else as soon as it as soon as it rises up you mentioned the superstar shake-up i think that's interesting i kind of made a little jibe earlier about the the brand split just going out of the window the last few weeks which is interesting to me because i think wwe's done really well with the brand split recently i certainly think since you know may 2016 when this one came in it's the best they've ever done they still don't really push the whole you know raw versus smackdown idea as well as they could every time they do survivor series i get a bit cynical i'm like yeah right like like i'm meant to buy into this feud that doesn't exist however <laughs> the, the 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 that's the word i'm looking for the the lines between the two have been far better you know it's, it really has been the last six weeks where all of a sudden samoa joe is allowed on you know on raw and apparently it's because kurt angle's making the decisions and ray mysterio is coming over and ties into everything we we're talking about it's the same with charlotte and becky lynch do you think there's anything in it that maybe despite having a shake-up plan for, I think it's April 16th and 17th, or 15th and 16th, something like that, do you think there's anything in potentially them, with the Fox deal coming up in six months' time, which they obviously need better ratings for, just merging the two back together to ensure that all their top stars, much like those we've already dropped in this conversation, can go to both? Or do you think they'll, they'll stand true with it? And maybe, maybe they just unify all the titles. Because obviously if you unify a title, much like they've done with Sasha and Bayley, everyone can, you know, the champions can just travel to both shows. I mean, do, do you see it in for the brand split? Or do you think that's just, do you think it's more crazy WrestleMania booking where all the rules go out the window? I think it's just more crazy WrestleMania booking because of the fact that they're wanting to keep their storylines, you know, you know, this whole build up with Kofi, you know, they built that up until this last week. They finally, you know, it finally became an outcome that all the fans liked. And, you know, ever since they have gotten rid of GMs and everything else, you know, it seems like they're, you know, and letting superstars come back and forth. I could kind of see them just tying everything together in a perfect little bow. But I also see that they may just do it occasionally, like, you know, have one person go over to SmackDown or one SmackDown person go over to Raw, you know. But, you know, I could also see them unifying the belts, which I think would be so much, so much easier than all this nonsense. Have, you know, the tag team belts, you know, for the men's especially, just have Usos and the Revival go head to head. And then, Whoever wins, you know, can float around, you know, the same with the WWE championship, you know, with the um, women's, you know, the women's belts. I think that if they can go around, especially even going down to NXT, that will give more star power if they go down to NXT than anything. If they just are like, okay, I think this is a really good idea. I think the fans really like it. If they took a poll I think everybody would be okay with that. And they, and it wouldn't confuse anybody. And you can do so many different storylines and so many different feuds if you unify your entire roster instead of just, you know, okay, well, you're going to go here and you're going to go over there and there's you can't come over here. It's like, you know, you draw a line in the sand. You know, it just... It's to me, I think they can um, honestly see that they are um, 
trying to unify it, but they may be doing it in a roundabout weird way, you know, because. Because <laughs> that's what they do, Cheney. That's that, what they that, do. That's what they do. And I think there is other logic there as well. I, this makes no sense. I don't think this is part of the plan. But if you do want to unify your men's world championships, it's a lot easier to do once Daniel Bryan has already thrown one in the trash. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, but it is. It, it's just a predetermined story there, which is like, you threw it in the trash. You don't respect your title. Come challenge me, blah, blah. And let's face it, WWE, the, the, the Universal Championship is now their main belt. It's always mm-hmm. been that way. Whichever one goes on Raw becomes the main championship. It's that horrible thing that I have to... I, I always say this on my videos and people go, no... In my world, when people ask me to explain wrestling, it is horrible trying to explain the universal and world titles and explain the sort of hierarchy of the raw one being more important. They just look at you like, how What are you? How did you even come up to, to learning about this? They're like, I know, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, I, I didn't do this, but there's nothing I can do. Because look, I, I, if you look, I understand that people go, but it's not a real sport, but it should be presented that way. And I know that there's convolution in both boxing, especially UFC at the moment. But at least, you know, you weigh this much, you fight for this title. You weigh this much, you fight for this title. And the heavyweight championship always means more because it's a whole legacy thing to it. But I do think it's a little bit convoluted in WWE. And like the United States championships and the IC championships don't mean much. So why not push them together? You know, why, why not put them <laughs> together and just... I, I re- That's the one thing that we haven't seen from the original brand split that I always thought was great. So, you know, Brock could go everywhere and I can't even remember who the hell was champions back there. But, you know, if you were a champ, you could appear on both shows. And the argument used to be, yeah, but you can't just not have a champion on one show. Yeah, you can. Brock Lesnar don't <laughs> exist no more. And it's, we're all fine with it. <laughs> we moan about it, but we're still watching. So it's not broken the company. And, you know, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know. To me, something funny has been going on, but I think a lot of funny business always goes on uh, around WrestleMania. As we are building up to WrestleMania, what do you think about the rest of the card? Obviously, we're probably going to get the Women's Battle Royal. We're getting the Women's Tag Team match. We've got all the... I think we pretty much have a finalized card now, although maybe mm-hmm. we'll, we'll add a few more things in. I was... Because I'm just surprised. I, I will admit the build doesn't seem to have you know caught many people's attentions like it usually does but it's still wrestlemania i'm still excited you know if anything there's a little too many matches on the card but it, you know the way i always justify it in my head is well at least it gets more wrestlers to feature on a big show like that i'd hate to be a wrestler and get to wrestlemania and just be told oh by the way you're not on the show you'd be like oh great that's rubbish um but are you excited you're not excited are there things you think they could be doing better what's kind of your your, your impression really excited about this year this year like you know it's going to be you know everyone's going to be looking at the main event and the matches before that so you know you know they're eventually going to have the wwe championship and the universal championship before the main event so if both of those come out to be kofi and um seth then people are going to be riding so high they're going to be more glued to it to the main event than if one of those two loses. If they lose it, it's going to be an internet meltdown and then Twitter's going to blow up. (laughs) You know, it's going to be the end of the world. Um, You know, but I rest of the card I like. Well, with the exception of the IC. Why are they doing that to the IC championship? Okay, we're going to take this belt on you and put it back on him, but now you're going to fight him again. So I don't know who's going to win. You know, I don't know if Demon Sin's going to come out. I have no idea. You know, it's just, I don't know. The United States Championship is a little bit easier to to understand. And then, of course, the feuds with uh, Roman Reigns and uh, Drew McIntyre, which I think, I think Roman's going to win that match because, and I don't like them burying Drew, but... There's no two good ways about this. It's either you bury Roman or you bury Drew. And I think a lot of people would turn more on Drew if he won instead of Roman winning. And then if Roman wins, everybody can be like, oh, and crying. And, you know, he beat leukemia and all this stuff. You know, he's so phenomenal. You know, you know, so I I can totally see that. The Randy Orton AJ Styles match is going to be good. It's going to be probably a clinic on what to do in wrestling. You know, um, Miz and Shane McMahon, I'm, I'm really, I really hope Miz wins because he's doing a wonderful job at being a face and he cuts really great promo Yeah. and I think he just sells it. And so I think, you know, 
I don't, I don't know. That one's kind of a hit or miss. It could be Shane, but it could go, go to miss. That one, I wouldn't be too upset who wins that. But I think the rest of, and the tag team championship, which there's like way too many bodies for in there, but you know, I don't think they're going to take the belts off of Sasha and Bailey just because they just put them on them. But you never know with WWE. But I can probably see, you know, I think they should build up a really good feud with the Iconics because, you know, they would be, you know, keep them on SmackDown. And then, you know, of course, you know, Sasha and Bailey can go wherever. But, you know, build up, build that up as a proper feud after WrestleMania. That would be, you know, that would be a really good feud. I would actually tune in to watch, you know, um. Other than that, no, I think the card is really well-rounded this year. They've gotten a lot of matches, and they're getting, you know, some pool. The Kurt Angle retirement match, God, I hope it's not Baron Corbin. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're going to know anything until the day, because I think if they're going to do a swerve, they'll just do it at WrestleMania now. I don't think they're going to do yeah. anything before. No, I've been looking all week going, where's John Cena? Is he hiding somewhere? He's camouflaged. <laughs> He's camouflaged into Raw. Uh, I did like him in the Samoa Joe match. I was so upset with the AJ Styles match. I was just like, what is going on? I was just like, really? <laughs> I just, I don't, the, the weird thing is as well, is apparently WWE said to Kurt, look, Kurt, in the, um, in the build-up to, to the show, you can pick whatever, you know, opponents you want. But we pick your WrestleMania opponent as Baron Corbin. You'd be a bit like, what? This is backwards. <laughs> this is back. Why, why, <laughs> yeah, why can't I have Samoa Joe, yeah, Samoa Joe or, or Rey Mysterio or whoever? But no, you're not allowed it. You're not allowed it. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. even him and Chad Gable would be a good match. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, I and their match was really great. You know, my, my fiance was just like, maybe they're bringing Jason Jordan back. I said, oh, Lord, not that again. We were actually at the Raw in Nashville when they announced who Kurt's son was. We were at that at that Raw when Jason how, Jordan became Kurt Angle's son. Yes. How, how was that? How was that for you? Was it uh did you enjoy it? <laughs> um it was interesting. Um it was a really good, you know, it, they had a good card that night and it was really good and we saw the dark matches. Um but yeah, it was just I was like, oh, boy, we're here to finally find out who Kurt Angle's son is. And then it came out to be Jason Jordan. And everybody was just like, <laughs> it was like crickets. It was like, chirp, chirp. It, you really know, you was. Could, it, it was. It was a packed place. But, yeah, everybody was just like, uh, what? <laughs> I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think the thing is. I like I like the idea, right? I really like the idea in the sense that you wanna if you wanna build somebody up and you wanna put them in a position like that, great, awesome, go for it. Wow, you know, Jason Jordan, Kurt Angle's son, but it's just everything around. There was no build. It was completely out of <laughs> left field. It didn't make <laughs> sense because Kurt Angle's on Instagram all the time talking about his kids and Jason Jordan wasn't one of his stupid kids. It's just like <laughs> it just it just it just didn't work. I actually, I actually think it could have been I, it, it, would, it would have been a good way to potentially give someone the rub, as they say. But the execution, it was like when Hornswoggle was Vince McMahon's son. It just feels like they don't have an idea. And don't forget, Hornswoggle was also, I forgot about that. Horns, someone reminded me the other day, Hornswoggle was also the anonymous GM. And I think when, yeah. when you get into those positions where you kind of feel like your back is against the wall and you almost lash out with craziness, you're like, bros, you can't, you can't let people buy into something this much and then give them that. You've got to treat it a little bit better. And I guess who really could have been Kurt Angle's son in hindsight? But you're right, it didn't work. That's the problem. It, it didn't work. And if something doesn't work, you've, you've, just, you've just got to accept it. I did hear an amazing theory the other day that Baron Corbin will win at WrestleMania because uh, Jason Jordan comes out to seek vengeance against his negligent father. I was like, I like that. If we're going to do it, let's be as stupid as possible, right? Let's be, right? Let's be really dumb. Um, let's get really... Oh, gosh. If Baron Corbin wins, everybody's going to be like... Oh yeah, good luck at WrestleMania. <laughs> do do you do you the what culture guy? <laughs> well, I I may troll everyone though. Yeah, best decision ever. Now, do you do you think? How do I phrase this? Do you think? Do you think he should win? Because surely Baron Corbin gets more out of that 
Then Kurt Angle, I love Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is one of the best ever, but I think it's fair to say that these days he's not the Kurt Angle we once knew. So do does Baron Corbin get more out of Let's say John Cena doesn't come out and I'm wrong and all this. Does he get is the thing that puts Baron Corbin over the edge? Him beating I think Kurt Angle. so. I think if he wins, I think that yeah, the fans aren't going to love it because they already don't like Baron Corbin. But he will be pushed so over you know, to, you know, that will just tick, that will just tick the fans off even more. It'll just, you know, they'll just be in a rage, you know, internet meltdown. Um, um, but I think if they do have Baron Corbin and John Cena doesn't come out, I think he, he could pull that win and just shock everybody. And then, you know, everybody's going to boo, but <laughs> I th- yeah, they will. Everyone will be quiet for like two seconds and then they'll just be like, oh my God, boo. You know, I think everyone wants to see Kurt Angle go out as a hero, but I think if they push it with Baron Corbin, I think he can, honestly, I think he can pull it out really well. Um, Because like you said, Kurt Angle is not the Kurt Angle that we all grew up and adored. You know, I watched him you know, in the attitude era. So seeing him now, it's just like, oh, you know. <laughs> time is a you horrible thing, retire. Cheney. Yeah. T- oh, yes. T- time is the worst. <laughs> and it, it, comes for, it comes for us all and we can't do anything about it. Nope. And so I think, I think that would be a good, you know, put more heat on Baron Corbin and then he can come out Monday night after Mania and be like, yeah, I beat Kurt Angle. How do you guys like that? Ha, 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 ha. You know? I think it would work, you know? I really do. I, I'm not saying that it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. But it does give back. What does Baron Corbin come out and do otherwise? Ah, shit, I got beat again. Like that, you know, <laughs> I, th- I think sometimes, as much as we may hate it, long-term planning like that isn't the worst thing I- in the world. And I, I, right. I, I, don't, I think I'd be mad. But I think I'd be mad in the right way. I, I can't believe this asshole beat Kurt Angle. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. I'd have to wait and see how I, how I felt at the time. But right. I, I don't think it's awful. I really, really don't. No, I don't think it would be awful. I, you know, what I, the one other thing I'm still debating about is, you know, this whole Rey Mysterio and Dominic thing. What, What's that what about? They... Yeah. It's got, because it's got to be something now, right? Like, it's got to be. Otherwise... Why? Why is he there? Like, I don't. I know he's training to be a wrestler, but what? You know, is this? You know, is this like the Miz with his dad? You know, at Fastlane, is this going to be a repeat of that where he just, you know, goes on a rampage and starts, you know, just slamming people down? You know, I don't know. I mean, attacking I... Samoa Joe. I mean, <laughs> for hurting his dad. The wi- him in the Kakina clutch, the, I mean... The weird thing about Shane McMahon versus The Miz, though, out of all the stories, it's the one that makes the most sense. Like, it's the most logical mm-hmm. story. It's the one that hasn't gone all crazy with, oh, I can't believe this has happened. You know, it, it, it does. It just It's just told... I'm not saying it's the best story ever, but it's told a very standard, basic WWE story. And because everything mm-hmm. else is going crazy, I'm like, oh, it's quite nice. I know what to expect every week. They, they do it. I think it'll be okay. I, 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 I don't think it's going to, again, be the best thing in the world, but I'm all right with it. I think it's fine. I think it's all right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that feud, they built it up perfectly. You know, they, they built it up, you know, for, for months. And then, you know, it finally paid off in the end when Shane attacked him. So I think they did that very well, you know, with, you know, with the storylines that we've gotten and it's not as, it's not as muddy and as murky as all the other ones, but, you know, I can see, you know, you know, it paying off big time. Now, you know, my next thing is I'm wondering about since we're going into post-mania plus with um, Superstar Shakeup, what do you see what Kevin Owens is going to do oh. after Mania? What is that is, about? I, I don't know. They just, they put him back on and then they just like took him away. And I'm just like, what? Wait, what? I know. Uh, what? Yeah. You know? It makes no sense. I was just like, why did we have that match at Fastlane then? I was just like. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, I don't get this. You know, it's the same with, um, 
you know, I don't know what they're going to do with Sammy. I know he's, you know, been on the road to recovery. And then, of course, Bray Wyatt's about to come back or make a comeback. So I don't even know what they're going to do with Bray Wyatt unless he's going to be part of Daniel Bryan's faction or something. I what? Which I could kind of see, but what, what? I don't really know what they're going to do with him. Somebody said he should come out and attack Alistair Black and go into a feud with him. I was like, yeah, you should do that. I like that idea. Yeah, I that, think that'd be I quite good. I think of that. I think they'd work really well together. Because they could do, like, you know, who's more crazier? You know, who's more demonic? You know? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good feud. I mean, it sucks for Bray mm-hmm. Wyatt because I want him to lose. But, hey, that's what Bray Wyatt does. He loses. So, you know, you can just do that. But, no, I, I, I didn't hate that idea. Someone mentioned it. I was like, yeah, that's decent enough. Like That's I, I'm actually a- decent enough. They're both kind of spooky, you know. Yeah. Both no, got, it, you know. They're- it's true. So, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not adverse to that. But we'll have no, to, I'm not either. We'll have to wait I and mean, see. Yeah, we'll have to, you never know, you know, what they're going to do. But, you know, I think, you know, coming out of this after Superstar Shakeup is going to be a lot better. Hopefully there's going to be a lot more better storylines, not only for the men's, but the female side too. And it also depends on if they're pulling anybody from NXT um, female-wise. I don't really think they need to call up anybody else ma- male-wise. Um, I think the men's division is just fine the way it is, you know, um, it also depends on, you know, I still think Gargano is going to come up, but I don't know now with the NXT championship on the line, if they're gonna, if they're going to push him to be the NXT champion or not and have him just come back to raw or, you know. That is why I like the shakeup. There, there's a lot of questions. I mean, I presume, yeah, Becky goes one way, Charlotte goes the other. I can see that happening. I'd move AJ Styles. Um, I'd probably move Finn Balor. Who else would I move? Samoa Joe, potentially, I'd shift across. Although he only he went recently. I guess one of Miz or Shane McMahon maybe moves to, to stop that feud. You know, maybe you finally decide what you're doing with Heavy Machinery, Nikki Cross, EC3, if he still exists. I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> But, you know, so I think there's some there's some fun things that, that, that we can do. Maybe Seth Rollins moves. I doubt they do that because I think he'll be a universal champion. But maybe they do. Maybe they do do that. I, th- th- there's options there. And hopefully when we do come out of WrestleMania, we can kind of calm things down a little bit, reestablish more characters. And, you know, I, again, I understand why they're doing it. But I think there's a fair argument that they have focused a bit too much on, you know, three specific women. Although they do do that. They do do that with the men as well. Like, so many people Mm -hmm. get lost in the shuffle when we're building up to big matches. I mean, look at Drew McIntyre. We had to rehab Drew McIntyre the last three weeks because all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, we need to get in a match with Roman Reigns. So it's not exclusive (laughs) to the women. It is exclusive to WWE. And Mm -hmm. they've shown time and time again they can... You know, they can balance it out. So I I, I think it will be all right long term. I think everything will be okay. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. I think... You know, even with the with the women division, I think if they just, you know, reset, like, you know, you said, just reset some feuds, build up to newer feuds in order for SummerSlam. Because last this last SummerSlam, there was really no build up. No, it just you went. Know? Yeah, it just went. It just, it was just there. It was just like, bam. And it's just like, okay, you know, uh, you know, because SummerSlam is supposed to be as big as WrestleMania. I mean, you know, that's their second WrestleMania type show. And this year I was a little disappointed, but you know, I think they've gotten too many pay-per-views crammed into everything. I think they should drop a few pay-per-views because it's not helping feuds go along because, you know, like the whole Bailey and Sasha thing, they totally forgot about that. Now they're now they're the tag team champions, and it's just like, okay, if you were a casual wrestler and you're just like, weren't they in a feud with each other? Didn't they hate each other's guts? They beat each other up for three weeks, and now they're totally fine. You know, it's you know, it's stuff like that that is just like there, there's like there was no build up, and I'm hoping that they're going to build up better towards SummerSlam. You know get some of these storylines to start after mania and just keep building up to it, you know, that this is going to eventually happen and them finally cementing those places at SummerSlam. But you never know, you know, they could go in a completely different direction. 
I agree that I think Finn Balor needs to go to SmackDown and mm. AJ come over to Raw. Yeah. I think that would be very interesting because, you know, or just keep Finn and AJ and they can start a tag team. You know, that could be a possible, but we don't have many tag teams. I mean, I haven't seen Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder in a minute. Oh, so yeah, where'd they go? Where'd they, they go? I like those two. I was like, we, we've we been building up to this. You know, they're the lovable losers, you know. But it's just like, there's nothing. It's just, it's gone to building up, you know, Aleister Black and Ricochet, you know. And their whole, you know, just taking over the tag team division, you know, on Raw. But it's just, you know... I don't really know. I think Heavy Machinery is going to probably either... I hope they if they keep them on SmackDown, I think they'll have a better push. Um, unlike Raw, which is also like crickets. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's the same with both. You can't really pick one or the other because either way, they're going to get pushed. It just depends on how hard they're going to push yeah. on them. You know, I think they're, it, they're very good. I love Otis. He's hilarious um but i also see that you know with the women's division i don't really know would they move nia Jax over to um smackdown i can see that yeah i can probably see that yeah yeah have her and charlotte get into a feud you know if charlotte keeps her belt they keep charlotte on smackdown you know she could build up a feud with nia you know or you know they can move to mina which i I have nothing on Tamina. No, no, I no honestly... one's Mina, Cheney. No one is yeah, Mina on Tamina. <laughs> never <Tamina>. forget. <laughs> I never will forget that. <laughs> that t-shirt is... I bought that t-shirt. Anyone that joins <laughs> me live in the ups and downs chat, I bought that t-shirt. I'm wearing that on a video, man. There's no there's no way I'm not doing that. 100%. You should, you should, you should go to WrestleMania wearing uh, it. I'm, I'm doing it now. <laughs> now nah, I'm going to. I'm going to piss everybody off and just go nuts when she comes out. No, that's I happening now. Shirt. Yeah, that, that's happening now. That's that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Esta- yeah, I know. Established. Um, maybe you know, even you know, keep Natalia at Raw because she's a very strong personality, and you build her up into a feud. She, I mean, yeah, she's had feuds with Riot Squad and all that, but I think they need to just reset Natalia and have her in a really good feud because her and Charlotte were really good when they had their feud. You know, the legacies, you know, it was against the two legacies. Everybody wanted to see that. You know, that was a big draw. You know, is it going to be the flares or the hearts? You know, you know, it, you know, they, they built that up so great. And then, you know, then they moved Natalia to Raw and then it's just kind of like, oh, she's with Dana Brooke. And then, you know, Dana Brooke yells at her and nothing, <laughs> nothing happened after that, you know, and poor Dana Brooke got beat up by Ronda Rousey last week. And, you know, we haven't seen her since. So, you know, um, I just think, you know, if they're going to, going to call up some females, I don't know who they would call up except for, you know, like Candice LeRae or, um, you know, uh, Shayna Baszler, but I don't, you know, it's just going to depend on the NXT match, you know, and that's what's going to, that's what's going to impact is after NXT is done, where we stand with Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania and after, and after TakeOver, that's what's going to be the curve, I think, they're not, they, and they may hold off on calling people up until after the Superstar shakeup, but, you know, I think one way or another, they're going to redo the, do a whole reset on feuds. And, you know, I think that would be really good, you know, maybe build Tamina up as his dominant power horse on raw and move Nia over to SmackDown and show that she's a big powerhouse and she could get into a lot of feuds, you know, with Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville, you know, her and Charlotte, you know, I think it would be better. If they did that, you know, um, only thing I don't know about is Alexa, you know, cause she's been on injury, you know, so I don't know if they're gonna, hopefully they won't do any more in moment of bliss, but I have a feeling we're going <laughs> to have one Monday night. Oh, we hundred percent will Cheney. There's no way they can't help themselves. That's half the, <laughs> that's half the problem. 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, well, I hope you're right. I hope it is great because so far they have not they have not been great at all. <laughs> like you mentioned, EC3. He disappeared after Dean Ambrose whooped him. So... Who knows? What did that man do? What did that man do? We will. Find I don't know out. what he's done. No, we I've will heard find he has some heat on him, but I don't know for what. You know, so I I don't know. Maybe they'll finally do something with those other NXT call ups that they've had promoted that they promoted for ages. It seemed like three months of promos. It just felt like a million years. I was like, oh my god, I'm so sick of seeing this promo. <laughs> I know. I don't. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it baffles me. It really, really does. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll put a smile on my face and I will keep going because I feel I like know, that's all I we just can do. Like, I'm like, okay, we're just in this now. All right, I'm invested. Come yeah, on. exactly. Just keep giving let's, it to let's me. The payoff. Yeah, yep. I'll keep going back. Then I go on internet. I moan and I carry on doing it. Uh, I, know, I know. I moaned at the uh, Bobby Lashley Finn Balor match. I was oh, like, oh, why? I know. What was the point? What was the point? A waste of my time. Like, I, 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 obviously only joking, but a small part of me is like, what waste of my time? Why did I buy into I this? Oh, it's dear. just like, I thought we were done. Now we're not. We're I know, not. I know. Just make up your mind. Just make up your mind, please. And I'll go with it. But don't, oh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Janie, amazingly, we somehow got to an hour. That flew by. Uh, wow, that, yeah, that did. I really, really, really did. Uh, we have to get you back on. There's no two ways about it. You speak far too passionately and far too well about wrestling not to do it again. There's no two ways about it. Uh, before we do uh, cut off, though, is there anything you'd like to promote, Twitter? You don't have to, but I always like to give people the opportunity. Well, um, I have a blog um, that I do chronicle my breast cancer journey um, that I do a lot. Um, and it's called Musically Pink um, at WordPress. Um, so... If I'll probably put the link in the uh, Facebook group um, for everybody, but um, yeah, it's another good way of keeping up with me, you know, because you know it's calmed down finally with all the appointments. So <laughs> yeah, until April, and then I have to do like fifty more. So, <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, um, just find me on Facebook as the Rock Chick. Um, I'm also on Twitter as the Rock Chick 1979. I know. I, I will, as, you, as you brought it up, I just want to end the, the podcast by saying I don't want to sort of dive too much into your into your personal affairs, Cheney. But anybody in the in the Facebook group will know that Cheney has been uh, a real source of inspiration and motivation for many reasons. Uh, you know, going through some stuff that you wouldn't wish on anyone. Uh, but honestly, you, your, 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 your positive attitude towards it, like I say, it it re it reaffirms my own positive way to life. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Of course, I. I just try to be positive. I've I stayed positive through this whole journey. It's been five years, but you know, I've had some start stops with it. But you know, I've I've always carried on as much as this journey has given me. I just I just take it. I just take it one day at a time, and I just basically, you know, I just live every day of my life to the fullest as much as I can. Hell yeah, hell yeah, Cheney. Honestly, again, <laughs> if you, if you, if you want more, you can just join the Facebook group. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to try and overplug it. That's not what it's about. But it's just genuinely that group is awesome anyway because of the community and people like Cheney are, are a massive part of that. So yeah, obviously, thank you for your support. Thank you for just being a good person around. Thank you for being a great podcast guest. Uh, but also, just yeah, it is. It's, it's been it's one of those things that makes you try to take a step back yourself and go man you know let's just enjoy every day as it comes so yeah genuinely it's been awesome awesome well glad i'm glad to have um contributed today and i'm glad that i am a sponsor for you to help out your um your career but and you do you and you really you really really do like I, I say that all the time to patrons and you're included in that i wouldn't be able to do what i do without it i really really wouldn't it is so helpful so cheney thank you so much for your time again Thank you for just being a, a good person all around. And like I say, we'll <laughs> absolutely have to get you back on uh, in a few weeks' time or something like that. All right, that sounds perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and everyone else listening as well, thank you to you too. Again, on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. You can watch us on YouTube if you prefer, youtube.com forward slash the middle report rules. And make sure you tune in live every Wednesday, 1 p.m. GMT, over on the YouTube channel. And I've got merchandise, of course, simonmiller.bigcartel.com. Nice and easy. Uh, make sure you have good evenings. Make sure you have good weekends. WrestleMania is but a week away. So try and put a smile on your face if you can. And I will talk to you all again very soon.